father took his son camping, and a few days later, they returned home with an unusual keepsake, a live wolf cub. What happened next is incredible. When Jack first organized a weekend camping trip for his son, Mason, he never expected they would end up bringing home a wild animal. However, Mason bonded very quickly with the wolf cub. You see, the pair went hiking into the woods when they began their camping adventure. Jack led his boy deep into the forest until they found a nice clearing where they could set up camp. They pitched their tent, and as the sun dipped lower towards the horizon, they built a small fire. Mason watched the sunset, sitting by the warmth of the fire, while Jack roasted some hot dogs for their dinner. As the moon and stars came out, shining in the night sky, Mason and Jack told stories and talked about life's big questions. Mason got so enraptured in the conversation that he forgot all about his dinner. He placed his plate with the hot dog by his feet, with the intent to eat it later. First, Jack, then Mason, spotted a small animal fleeing the clearing, a hot dog hanging ostentatiously from its mouth. They shared a chuckle together. Mason said he was happy to share food with creatures in need. Jack put the fire out, and they went to bed. The pair awoke early in the morning, the warmth of the sun heating the tent up like an oven. Jack wanted to stay camped in the same spot, but he realized some reconnaissance might be necessary to make sure they were safe from being attacked by wolves. They spent the greater part of their day trekking around the forest, looking for evidence of a pack of wolves or tracks from larger beasts. Oddly, they found nothing. They returned to their campground, feeling reasonably assured of their safety. Once again, the father and son built a fire, and they started cooking beans for their dinner. It did not take long for the fire to attract the wolf cub right back to the clearing. This time, Jack and Mason were on the lookout, and they quickly spotted the young wolf by the edge of the clearing. Mason begged his dad to cook up their leftover hot dogs to feed the wolf. Eventually, Jack gave in and cooked the meat. The wolf slowly crept closer and closer. Jack handed Mason the hot dogs. Mason first placed one on the ground, like he had the night before. The wolf inched towards them until it was close enough to snatch the food away. It fled back to the cover of the trees to eat. Mason went to the edge of the clearing and sat. He extended another hot dog out for the wolf, and to Jack's dismay, the wolf began moving towards his son. Jack almost called out to Mason to ask him to be careful when the wolf gently took the hot dog right out of Mason's hand. Mason went back to the fire to get the last hot dog. He sat there, coaxing the wolf to come to them. It took almost an hour for the wolf to come and sit by the fire. When it finally settled next to Mason, it was rewarded with the last hot dog. Mason sat next to the wolf and it eventually laid its head upon his lap, seeing Mason light up like never before. Jack decided to encourage the situation and asked his son if he would like to sleep outside in the moonlight with his new friend. Mason nodded fervently. The three slept by the fire that night. Mason and the wolf cuddled throughout the night, but unfortunately, morning came, and the father and son duo had to pack up and return home. When they collected their belongings, the wolf cub sat and watched. They began their hike back to the car, and the wolf followed from a few yards behind. They walked for miles, and the little wolf kept following. Finally, they got back to their vehicle. Jack was ready to go when Mason yelled, wait. He opened his door, and to everyone's surprise, the wolf jumped onto his lap. He doesn't have a family, maybe we are meant to be his family, Mason said with intuition beyond his years. Nervously, Jack obliged, and they brought the animal home. For a few wonderful years, the wolf lived with Jack and Mason. They named him Timber, a tongue-in-cheek reference to where he was found. Mason grew up with the wolf, learning how to care for another and the benefits of companionship. So he was understandably heartbroken when Jack explained that the wolf had grown into the fearsome predator that he was meant to be, and it was time to release Timber back to his home environment. Logically, Mason knew that his father was right, but he was still incredibly sad to lose his best friend. He was sadder still when a few days later, Timber escaped and ran away. 
Mason had wanted to bring him back to the forest where he was found. He had wanted to give treats and give the wolf a proper farewell. Jack saw the pain in his kid and the following day returned home with a surprise. He got Mason a pet dog. Jack explained that the dog could stay for his home life and wouldn't have to leave when she reached maturity. Mason immediately went to the kitchen and cooked up some hot dogs. He cut up a hot dog and put it in a doggy dish for the pup. The pup had no interest in the food and refused to eat it. Mason felt like this was a sign that they were not kindred spirits. The dog could not fill the void left by timber. Mason, now a teenager trying to manage his grief, organized a camping trip with his friends. Mason was familiar with the forest where Jack often took him, so he brought some friends out there to show them the beautiful woods. They set up camp, made a fire, and most of the group began drinking and celebrating their time together. Mason, however, didn't feel like drinking, so he opted to go for a walk instead. Armed with a flashlight and some trail mix, he set out into the woods. Mason's friends grew concerned when a few hours had passed, and Mason had not returned. So they put out their fire and searched the forest for their friend. It took another hour for them to locate Mason. He was standing frozen in the middle of a small clearing, being circled by a pack of four wolves. Mason's friend started panicking, thinking about how they needed to free their dear friend from these predators. But Mason appeared to be cool as a cucumber. In a low, calm voice, he told the group, it's all right. I've been here before. The group watched in dismay as the wolves circled closer and closer around Mason. Mason wondered if the wolves could hear his heart pounding in his chest or the blood roaring in his ears. He wasn't sure of the proper way to behave around fully grown wolves, so he did what worked with timber in the past. He shook the trail mix out of his bag onto the forest floor. Three wolves stopped to sniff the food but quickly regained focus on Mason. The fourth wolf examined the food and bent down to eat some. Mason thought it was interesting. He squatted down to make eye contact with the wolf, and he was blown away by what he saw. Mason fell back dazed. His friends were deeply concerned and they saw the three wolves pull their lips back and display their teeth. Mason was about to be attacked, sitting as he was in the circle of wolves. But then the fourth wolf growled deeply, and the other three backed off. The wolf yipped and howled at its pack until they eventually slinked away back into the trees. The clearing was eerily quiet as everyone was in shock about what had just happened. Did this wild wolf really just save Mason's life? Mason rose to his feet and approached the animal, his hand shaking from adrenaline. He reached out, and the wolf bowed its head as Mason petted him. Mason confirmed his theory. You won't believe the incredible reunion that just took place. Hello, Timber, Mason said with tears in his eyes. He bent down and hugged Timber, and for a few short moments, they enjoyed each other's presence. That is until Timber licked Mason's hand and bounded away back into the woods. You see, even though Mason was now a teen, Timber just saw his pack surrounding the little boy who had been his best friend for a long time, and there was no way he would let anything happen to him. Still taking in what had just happened, Mason wiped the tears from his cheeks and finally said a real goodbye to his sweet pet. He realized that Timber had found a new family. He realized that Timber was happy now back in his natural environment. Lastly, as Mason's friends surrounded him in a group hug, he realized that he, too, had found a new family. The group of friends returned to their campsite, and Mason texted his dad to explain his encounter with their favorite wolf and the incredible realization he had that family is a love and support that can be found in many places and expressed in many ways. And for that, Mason was eternally grateful. One night, when David met a giant wolf with a letter in his mouth in the middle of the highway, he thought he was hallucinating. But when he read the shocking content of the letter, he took immediate action. A man named David was driving along the highway on a starry night when he found something in the way. He parked his car a few feet away when he saw something that had frozen his blood, a wolf sitting in the middle of the road, staring at him with sharp eyes. David was about to start the car again and run in the opposite direction when he found a letter in the wolf's mouth. Just then, 
He thought he was hallucinating. A wolf bites a letter. What can he do in the middle of the road? Well, if he's going crazy, he might as well go all out. David plucked up all his courage, jumped out of the car and approached the wolf slowly. The beast bowed his head and threw the letter at the stranger's feet. Just then, David learned a shocking thing, involving a man named Boris and a terrible situation. Boris is a veteran with a sad story. He was sent to fight in Afghanistan. At first, he was extremely proud of his country's service. He felt that he was part of something greater than himself. Unfortunately, his wife disagreed with him. When he was first deployed, they were newlyweds and their first child was about to be born. The whole situation was quite overwhelming for her. So, when Boris returned after his first deployment, still physically intact, she begged him to leave the army. Their daughter, Alenka, is now one year old and she cannot be cared for alone. Boris didn't want to retire, so he went back for a second deployment. This time, however, he was not so lucky. Tragedies happen in more than one way. He has been conducting routine inspections of their designated areas when someone missed the improvised explosive device. Boris only remembers loud noises and flashes. When he woke up, he found himself in the hospital, missing a leg. The other was badly injured, with some shrapnel embedded in some places. This means that he always risks infection in some way. As soon as the news reached home, the second tragedy happened. Boris has been trying to reach his wife for several days, but without success. Until he got a call from his mother. She carefully told him that his wife was missing and left Alenka in her care. When his wife learned of his tragedy, she was at a loss and realized that she could not take care of him like a child. Boris was shocked at the news that his wife had left him. Now, he not only has to face the disability, but also has to take care of his daughter alone. He knew he needed to get back to her as soon as possible. The poor child has been through too much. Alenka was ecstatic to see her father. He is her hero in every way, which will only strengthen Boris's determination to become a better father. He and his daughter lived with their mother for several years, but he soon realized that the city was not the place for his daughter to grow up. He wanted her to enjoy the outdoor activities freely, so the father and daughter packed up what they had and set off to live in a small village in the mountains. From day one, Boris knew he had made the right decision. Alenka was happy for all the spaces where she could run and play in the garden. Boris found a warm cabin on the outskirts of the village and accompanied her to school every day. Their life went on gracefully in this small village. Boris opened up a small piece of land for himself and his daughter, and everyone seemed to welcome them. The only problem Boris has to face is that his daughter is lonely. In an ideal world, he would have more children with his wife, and his daughter would have brothers and sisters, but unfortunately, it was not meant to be. But Alenka found a simple solution to the problem, she just wanted a dog. This is not a complicated requirement, but it brings back painful memories of Boris. He trained a dog when he was in the army, and when he died, he felt very depressed. He wasn't ready for another puppy, so he refused to let his daughter enjoy the luxury. He didn't want to see her as heartbroken as he was. However, fate has other plans for the father and daughter. A little soul appeared on their way when they least expected it. One Sunday, when they were walking once a week, they heard a cry. They walked towards the sound and found something amazing. On the track in front of them, there was a small ball of grey fur. Alenka ran over before Boris stopped her. She picked it up and took it back to her father. In her arms, she was the youngest wolf cub he had ever seen. Alenka walked home with her new friend without saying a word. Boris could see her love for the lovely little animal and felt that he could not separate her from it. But it wasn't long before the wolf began to grow exponentially. Alenka called him Sergei, and they were inseparable. He followed her wherever she went. In some ways, this completely reassured Boris because he knew that there was a big wolf by her side and that she would always be safe. He spent a lot of time training him, and with his intelligence, he was very confident that the training would last, 
but he didn't realize how important it would soon become to him. Every day, Sergei trotted into town at the same time to accompany Alenka home from school. The ceremony also helped Boris a lot because he didn't have to work on crutches every day. One day, however, when Sergei arrived at Alenka's school, she immediately realized that something was wrong. Sergei seemed very nervous and anxious. He jumped around her, moaning as if there was something wrong with him. She didn't understand what the problem was until she got home. Her father lay in bed, pale. When she entered his room, he had little energy to meet her. Alenka has seen him in this state before. His leg must be infected, which means he is in urgent need of medicine. She first confirmed that his fever was not too high, and then quickly went to the city. There, she asked everywhere for help, but no one could provide what she needed. So she went home and asked her father what to do. He asked her that the fever would go down and that it would get better soon. However, he was so wrong. As the hours passed, Boris's consciousness seemed to disappear more frequently, and Alenka began to panic. She splashed him with cold water and finally woke him up. After sleeping for a few hours, he weakly beckoned for a piece of paper and a pen. He wrote something on the paper and folded it up. Then he told Alenka to go to the highway to stop anyone driving by. If they are kind-hearted, they will help. But before she could do anything, Sergei did something unexpected. He bit the letter with his mouth and walked quickly towards the highway. There, he met a kind stranger named David, who was reading the letter with trembling hands. He could have put it back at the wolf's feet and left, but fortunately, he did not hesitate to help. David jumped back into his car and walked to the village. He drove straight to Boris's house and helped Alenka get him in the car. Then he went to the hospital to provide Boris with the treatment he needed. If it hadn't been for Alenka's beloved pet wolf, her father would not have survived the night. Sergei repaid their kindness by saving him and participating in the rescue work. This must be an event that none of them will forget soon, and it is also an amazing expression of loyalty and love.